So you have motion capture data, but the raw data clearly needs a little cleanup. Not a problem. Now personally, I use Quick Magic to do all my motion capture because it gives you 50 seconds of free mocap every month, but you can get your mocap from wherever you want. Whatever motion capture you use, it should spit out an FBX file at the end, which we can just import to Cascader. Now, Cascader will ask you if you want it to automatically create a rig for you, and you should say yes. Yes, yes, and a few seconds later you will have the animation, and Cascader will automatically have created a very powerful rig for you, which you can now use to clean up the animation just like you would in any other software. But, obviously, you already know how to manually clean animation in other software. So today, I'm going to show you what you can't do in your other software. As you can see, we have a mocap animation of a soldier throwing a home explosive at the ground and then scurrying back. And normally, if we were to try and clean this up, it would be a pain to go through and make sure that all the footsteps are correctly placed. Traditionally, you would delete the frames in between the major parts of the sequence and then fix things one keyframe at a time. But in Cascader, we can now auto-generate the most likely animation that would have needed to happen between two key frames. Which means it doesn't matter if the raw mocap data is low quality, because Cascader only needs poses. So if I go through this animation and delete everything except for the main poses, we will be left with something like this. Now I know this looks kind of bare bones and lean, but check this out. If we select all the keyframes and then hit the purple button, it will generate animations in between our keyframes. And just like that, we have essentially cleaned up the mocap data. Now at this point, you can still make any manual adjustments on top of this. For example, let's say we wanted the AI to bias generating a walking animation here and a running animation here. Well, to do that, all we gotta do is right click and pick what we want the biases to be, just like this, and it will try and generate something closer to those biases. Now that we have clean raw data to work with, from this point, it's way easier to make manual adjustments to make it smoother. In fact, it's so easy, we can just go up here and click the simulate physics button, and it will generate a simulation of how the character would move if real world physics, gravity, weight, and time was applied to it. If we like what we see in the green simulation, we can press this button, and now the green simulation will be baked to our original keyframes, which allows us to manually adjust things further until we're happy. And as awesome as that is, it's not even the coolest part. Let's say your motion capture actor is f***ed up and they missed their marks, like they were really supposed to start the animation way back here, but they were too close in the beginning. Well, if we just make that adjustment, Cascader will regenerate a completely new animation that now covers that new distance. And it will do this every time you adjust the keyframes in real time. Now, one important thing to understand about this system is the in-between generation is based on how much time is available between the two frames. So you can see that between these two frames, it generated a walking animation. But if we stretch the distance that the character needs to travel within the same amount of time, you will see the character changes from a walk to a run. And that's because in order to actually make it from point A to point B, within this time, the AI knows it will need to generate a faster looking animation in order for this to make sense. So if you are getting weird animations when you generate, first thing that I would check is, is there enough space between these two frames to generate something that makes sense? So, it's not perfect, but it's getting better every month, and it's still a hell of a lot faster than anything you're going to find in any other 3D software. I'll leave a link below in the pinned comment if you want to try it yourself for free, but if you decide that you do want to use it professionally, it's $8 a month, which is extremely affordable comparing it to other software like Photoshop or Maya. But if you use my promo code, you'll get a discount for being a part of my community. But yeah, this is how mocap is getting cleaned in 2026. And if you join me next video, I will teach you everything you need to know about this new system if you are migrating here from Blender. Regardless, hope that helps. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.